to Let's Talk About It. On today's episode, we're going to be looking at issues and what that looks like in each of our lives. For some people, an issue can be a conflict and that can uh, show up in a relationship. For some of us, we're dealing with financial issues. For others of us, we're dealing with health issues. Um, And so that's going to be our topic today. And I'm just so excited to bring on our guest. Um, you may have heard about her. Uh, we don't really know her name, but in the Bible, she goes by the woman with the issue of blood. Um, so let let's welcome her. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you, first of all, so much for taking the time out of your schedule to come and share with us today. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, so I guess I want to just jump right in um as i share with the audience we don't really know your name um in my research i wasn't able to find a name but i'm sure your mother gave you one of course of course uh would you like to share with the audience well actually i i would prefer not to okay uh only because i feel like remaining nameless in sharing of my story as based on the scriptures, the Holy Scriptures, it just gives a um, a place for those who feel like they are also nameless, that they don't really have a place to be identified by their name, but more so by their condition. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the things that I would like to speak to when our show allows um, how we can be attached to labels and conditions more so than even our names. Yes, yes. So for the people at home, um, would you mind just giving us a brief synopsis of your story? Oh, wow. There's a lot to my story. Um, I'll try to be as brief as I can. Okay. Um, But at any point, if you feel like, you know, I need to maybe redirect, please let me know because of course it's my story. And so I get very excited about my story. Um, uh, I am... I am known as you all know as the woman with the issue of blood and in my day and in my country an issue referred to not so much uh, as it is today a conflict of some sort but an Mm -hmm. issue referred to a a flow Mm -hmm. and so my issue was a flow of blood a discharge of blood from my body Mm -hmm. and so for 12 years 12 very long and hard years I I hemorrhaged and it was a slow process of just bleeding out. Mm. In my story, what what begins to happen is I began to become hopeless. Um, Mm -hmm. In my story, uh, one of the things that was very difficult for me um, is that I I had to give up my life. Uh, And I wear black today as a, a representation of grieving the things that you hoped and expect it to be in your life Mm. that for reasons that you had no control over Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, become your reality. Mm -hmm. And so you grieve loss, you grieve the loss of your health, you grieve the loss of potential um, financial gain that you would have had if you were able to be employed. Mm -hmm. You grieve the loss of perhaps not being able to get married because of your condition, which was in my case true. I couldn't marry because now I'm unclean. So there's many things that it represents loss Mm. of hopes and dreams. And so um, as a woman with an issue of blood, I had to be considered unclean. Mm. The Mosaic law clearly stated that if you were bleeding, you were considered unclean. And so there was a whole uh, guide and ritual that we had to go through as women when we were on our menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. But because mine never really ended, I was always unclean. You know, that's interesting. It makes me think about the notion of the irregular menstrual cycle, which mm-hmm. I feel like in today's society, we don't really talk about mm-hmm. and how there are some women who have irregular cycles also who suffer from like debilitating cramps mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, are still expected to show up. It's just like, you got to push through it or right. you deal with it. Right, right. And, and it's its own form of isolation. Mm-hmm. And even with the irregularity, um, I think that you have to also at some point address and speak to things like women who, because of their irregularities, have challenges with even having children, mm, you know, yes. which is again, um, you know, if the doctors are saying one thing and you don't have hope, mm-hmm. hope in God that uh, this, this situation is not going to be your reality, you can grieve the loss of 
of the hope of ever being a mother. So there's many uh, yes. dynamics to, to the situation. Mm -hmm. So I was considered to be unclean. And in my um, country, in my day, it was something that you had to publicly announce. Hmm. I, I don't even know if you can understand the gravity sure. of having to go publicly into any situation. Anytime I would be around people, I had to start out by saying, unclean, mm. unclean. I had to own that as my label, as 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 who I was. I was the unclean woman. No one wanted to touch me mm. because based on the Mosaic law, if they touched you, if I accidentally touched them, they would be considered unclean and they would have to go home, wash their clothes, wash their body and, and, and isolate themselves for a certain amount of time uh, within a 12 hour period or so. And then they would be considered clean again. So no one wants to go through that because they touched me. No one wanted to touch me. I, I don't know if anyone can understand how hard it is to live a life, 12 years, where you are not free to touch others and people don't want to touch you. You know that it's, it's, uh, it's definitely not the same, but it makes me think about what we've been experiencing these last 19 months in COVID and yes. not being able to touch our loved ones, you know, be in community and fellowship with our friends. And, you know, particularly thinking about like the older, the elderly community, mm -hmm. you know, who have lost their children and have lost family and they're the only ones left. And sometimes, you know, the only interaction they get of touch yes. or conversation is at church or at the YMCA or like, you know, those those type of gatherings or even thinking about the young children who get socialized and learn how to play yes. and learn, you know, social skills in school, but haven't been able to go to school or daycare because of COVID and like the impacts that that's going to have, right. you know, past this moment. Right. And so just I, 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 to your point, I can't really imagine we, we've been struggling in the last 19 months with all the effects that's been going on, but to be in isolation for 12 years for 12 something years. you can't control. Exactly. I mean, and you're all, and you're punished. You're punished for it. And it, it's not, it wasn't something that I wanted. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that I asked for, but something that I had to live with. Wow. And so I became a social outcast. And you know, in society, we still have people that are considered a part of the social outcast. And it, it's a very hard life when you don't feel embraced, when you know every time you walk in the room mm -hmm. that there's this unspoken feeling of rejection mm. and, and not being accepted. It, it's extremely difficult. And, and I know that it still exists today. Oh, yeah. And so uh, it's something that we need to identify and really deal with. Sometimes you try to ignore these things, uh, but it's, it's a reality. And so, yeah, I had to go, I had to say unclean everywhere that I went. And um, it was just a hard life for me. Not only was I dealing with the physical, uh, I, would, I would go to the physician uh, here and there. I mean, I wanted to be well. Yeah. Sometimes people think people want to be the way they are mm -hmm. and it's not true, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's like, I've done all I know to do. I've tapped into all the resources that I have and nothing has helped me. Just hearing you say that like, people think that you're in certain positions because you want to be there exactly or you haven't tried to seek counsel or or what have you it makes me think about um when i was living in new york at the time there was a homeless man in the subway terminal mm -hmm. and i walked past him but something had me go back and i i sat next to him and i said you know why do you think people walk past you mm. And he said, because people don't think that they could ever be in my position. Hmm. And then he shared that he used to live in Virginia, worked in finance, oh had a you know six figure paying job, nice house. His wife got ovarian cancer, very aggressive stage four, died within six months. Oh. He fell into a depression, oh. lost his job. You know, everything just started to tumbleweed. And, and that's how he was like homeless in New York. And hmm. it's just like, that man was smart, you know, he was on drugs. I mean, he wasn't on drugs, you know, like he was living his life, but sometimes things that you can't control when you're grieving, when you yes. lose people, yes. you know, how do you move fat? And, 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 and to think, I don't know what his family dynamic was. I don't know if they had family around them, right. but sometimes you can be overcome. And yes. even, even though people love you and they're trying to reach you, it still can be too much. Right. And then to just think about your your situation, it's just like, 
you know, it seemed like you didn't have any family. And even if you wanted to be with them because I of, be. yeah, I couldn't be. And it, it was very difficult. And, I, and as you were sharing about this man, you know, um, it, 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 it affected me not only physically and not only socially, but it affected me psychologically as well. Mm. Spiritually, I could not go to the temple to worship. There were just so many areas that I had isolation, isolation, isolation. And when I was just thinking about this man that you spoke with, you know, sometimes we don't address things like depression. Mm -hmm. And um, I know that in society today that mental health is really starting to get some of the recognition in terms of the need and the magnitude of, of that need uh, is becoming more acknowledged and addressed. And so, you know, sometimes we try to put uh, limitations on how long someone should grieve. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's been a month, come on, get over it, snap, snap out of it. Or, you know, it's been a year. I mean, come on, let's, you should move on. You should, you should find a, a, a new wife or, and, and, and we try to sometimes oversimplify the magnitude of what people are going through or, mm -hmm. you know, anxiety is becoming a real issue for many people today. And so, because you don't suffer with anxiety doesn't make my anxiety less real. Exactly. And so there's just a lot of things that, as you state, can cause us to be in a place or position we never planned to be in. Mm -hmm. And so we need to have compassion. Mm -hmm. We may not have the empathy to understand what someone is going through, but we can be sympathetic. Yeah. So my, my reality, and, and, and I know this may sound strange, as hard as it was for me, mm -hmm. and as long as it was for me, I can say now, not when I was in it, but I can say now that I am so glad that God chose me. Mm. Because it has made me a much more empathetic person. I can relate to isolation. I can relate to bleeding out. I can relate to wanting to give up. I can relate to all those magnitude of things when you try and you try and you try and it just seems like you keep hitting a wall or you feel like your prayers just bounce off the ceiling and bounce back down. It's just, it, it gives you a, a, a new perspective mm -hmm. and a new appreciation for what others are going through. Mm -hmm. So I am thankful. Yes, and I just wanted to touch on you, you know, the notion of bleeding out. I mean, in your case, it was a, a physical element, but then also it makes me think about, you know, people who are bleeding out psychologically, bleeding out emotionally, yes. and and how sometimes that depletion has us turn to substances yes. or to toxic relationships or, you know, to other things that cannot fill the void. And I'm curious, how did you sustain yourself? You know, like you, you couldn't turn to your friends and you see, you know, you carry yourself as a, a religious woman and, you know, like, so I, you didn't turn to substances. Like, how did you maintain your faith? How did you survive? Well, it wasn't always easy. I will say that there were, there were days that were very, very, very difficult for me, but God's grace sustained me. I, I, I can't explain it. It, it was, it was his grace. I, you know, sometimes you don't want to get up. You just, you want to just lie there and just say, forget it. I, I, but somehow every day I managed to get up and I managed to move. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not the magnitude of what you do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just that you did something. Mm. For someone it may, hey, I washed my face today. Yeah. And that's progress. Mm -hmm. It may be, you know what? I combed my hair today. Mm -hmm. And you just have to keep moving in the in the progression of your healing. Yeah. And so it was one step at a time, one day at a time. But then something awesome, something wonderful, something exciting, something that only God could do happened in my life. So I lived in the city and... Um, you know, there was always something going on, but this was a very special day. There was this, you know, loud commotion and I was trying to figure out what is going on? What is mm -hmm. going on? Mm -hmm. Of course, I couldn't just freely walk into the city, but I did hear that uh, uh, we have a chief ruler. His name is Jay Iris and he's the chief ruler of a synagogue in our city. And so he had invited Yeshua Jesus, 
the Holy One, the Anointed One, mm -hmm. to come into our city. And I'm thinking to myself, Jesus is coming to my city. He's a healer. Yes. The physicians couldn't help me, but I knew that Yeshua could help me. I knew he could help me. Uh -huh. And so I'm like, well, he is not coming for me, but he is coming for Jairus because Jairus's daughter, she was, um, she was 12 years old mm -hmm. and she was dying. Oh, it was a very serious condition, very serious condition, a very serious situation. So the chief ruler asked Jesus to come mm -hmm. to pray for her with hopes of her being healed. Mm -hmm. And so, he wasn't coming for me, mm -hmm. but I knew this was my opportunity. Come on, come on, <laughs> ram in the bush. <laughs> this was, was my opportunity. And I felt like God had heard my prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you have to just say, God, hear my prayer. Yeah. And I felt that he had heard my prayer. And so he was coming for Jairus and I'm, and I'm saying to myself, I have to get in the path of Jesus. How am I going to do this? How am I going to get in the midst of the crowd? Because wherever Jesus is, there is a crowd. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm saying to myself, well, how will I get to him and not touch the people? They will become unclean. He is the rabbi. He is the anointed one. How am I going to do this? But in my spirit, mm -hmm. <laughs> in my spirit, I just knew, I knew that if I could just touch the tassels of his prayer shawl. Mm -hmm. In the word of God, there is a scripture that says that there is healing mm. in the wings mm -hmm. of the son of righteousness. And this is from the prophet Micah. I'm sorry, Malachi. You see, the, the rabbis wore prayer shawls. Okay. And the prayer shawls have tassels on them. Mm -hmm. And in these tassels was the promises of God. They were reminders of what God had promised his people. Mm -hmm. And I am saying to myself that one of the promises of God is that he would heal his people. I'm sorry, I'm trying to not let my... <laughs> okay. I'm just getting so emotional. It's okay. Yes, and so... <sighs> the prayer shawl was my point of connection to the word of God. Yes, uh -huh. and I, I, I want to... I want to touch the 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 prayer shawl tassel because it is a reminder and of the word of god and his promises to heal mm -hmm. there's healing in the wings yes i had no community to agree with me for my healing mm -hmm. but i had the word of god mm -hmm. and as long as i could agree with the word of god i knew that i could be healed mm -hmm. And so I say this to some of you, maybe no one else will agree with you. No one else will have the faith to believe what you believe. But as long as you have the word of God to agree with your faith, God can do great things in your life. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that if I could touch the tassels of his prayer shawl, that I would be healed. It was a, a act of faith. So I go through the crowd, and I, I just press my way to Yeshua, Jesus. And as he is passing by, I touch. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I touch his, his prayer shawl and I feel the healing virtue go through my body. Oh, praise God. I feel strength restored. I feel the healing in my body. The pain is gone and the bleeding stops. So long, I had prayed for this moment in my life. Glory to God. And so, he stops. And I am wondering, why is he stopping? And he says to, to the people and to his disciples, he says, someone has touched me. And his disciples say, well, yes, of course someone has touched you. There's a whole crowd. And he says, no, I feel virtue leave my body. He says, who has touched me? Well, you know, I don't want to tell him. I mean, if I say something, then I, I don't know what the people will do. I, I don't know what he will do. I mean, he is the rabbi, the anointed one. I've touched him. I've, I've made him unclean. Yeah, that's, that's bold. That's chutzpah. Yeah, chutzpah. Oh. Do you know what chutzpah is? No, please oh, tell me. Chutzpah, chutzpah. Oh, chutzpah is a Jewish word. It, it means that you are audacious, that you are bold and courageous, that you do something that the normal people will not do. It's chutzpah. Okay. 
okay. Well, praise God for her too. <laughs> yes. And so he says, who has touched me? And I don't want to say it was me, but I know he is waiting for me to say it. So mm. I, I say it as I, who have touched you. And he, he said to me, I will never forget it. For so long I had been called the unclean, the woman with the issue. Mm -hmm. But in front of everyone in the crowd, he said to me, he said, he said, daughter, mm -hmm. daughter, child of God, how much more precious could you be called than daughter? Mm -hmm. And he said, daughter, your faith, mm. your chutzpah, mm -hmm. your courageous, your audacious and bold faith has made you whole. Wow. He applauded my faith in front of the entire crowd of people that were there and he called me daughter. I was whole. Mm. Not just healed, mm. but whole. Whole in my mind hole in my emotions, no more resentment, no more rejection, no more, no more feelings of social isolation. He healed me in every element of my life, mentally, physically, spiritually. I could go to the house of worship now because I was no longer unclean. I could say I was glad when they said unto me, go into the house of the, of Lord. the Lord. Yes. Daughter, your faith has made you whole. I will never forget the feelings in that moment. Mm. Well, we thank God. For yes. your chutzpah? Yes. Chutzpah got you a healing. Chutzpah got <laughs> me a healing. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And that is very true. And sometimes that is what we need. Mm. We have got to just say, forget about the people mm -hmm. and press our way and let our chutzpah get us to Jesus. I know. Because he is willing, he is ready, he is able, he is capable. But faith without works is dead. It's dead. And so there was a part of this healing that required me to participate. Mm -hmm. And it came with great risk. But as you stated, my chutzpah, mm -hmm. it paid off. Well, y'all... Don't let the people block your blessing. You better Amen. activate that chutzpah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Chutzpah helped me get my healing. I was whole. Mm. And he did all this with his way to heal a dying girl. He stopped for me. My life mattered to him. And your life matters to him as well. Mm -hmm. He will stop for you. He will deal with your issues. But you also need to meet him. Amen. It required action on my part. Faith without works is dead. In my case, faith without chutzpah mm -hmm. would have never happened. <laughs> but I'm so glad for my life, for my story, for my journey. And I pray that my story my testimony, my life experience will bless your life. Thank you for listening and thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing. My pleasure. Yes, yes. Well, we hope that this story has blessed some of you all and that you have been able to see an aspect of your life in no longer the woman with the issue of blood, Amen. but the daughter <laughs> of the Most High. Yes, and yes. And we'll see you next time on Let's Talk About It. Thank you.